Okay, so Junior Roberts here again with realjuniorroberts.com. In this video, we are looking at a work example involving waves. So let's go right into it. Okay, so our question here says we are to state two properties of electromagnetic waves. Right? So the two properties that we can list about electromagnetic waves is that one, right, they can propagate, right, uh, by propagate, what do you mean by they are able to travel, so propagate or travel in a vacuum, vacuum, right, so they're able to propagate in a vacuum, all right, the second thing that we can list is that they propagate at a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in a vacuum. Alright? Vacuum. So those are two properties that we know about electromagnetic waves. We could also include that the fact that you know they are transverse waves, right? Among many other properties. But these are the two that we're gonna list that they propagate in a vacuum and they travel at a speed of uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in a vacuum. So now let's continue. So here now, here now it says visible light is a type of electromagnetic wave. State two other types of electromagnetic waves indicating whether the wavelength of each is higher or lower than of visible light. So if we can remember the electromagnetic spectrum, right, we have our gamma waves, right, gamma radiation, then we have our x-rays, then we have ultraviolet, then we have our visible region, and then beyond the visible region we have the infrared region, and then we have our radio waves, right? And from, you can remember about the electromagnetic spectrum, right, we have wavelength increasing this way, right? So wavelength increases this way, while the frequency increases in the opposite direction. Right? So wavelength increases this way and frequency increases this way. Right? So wavelength increases to the right while frequency increases to the left. So they want us to list uh, two other types of EM waves. Right? So we, so we can mention gamma. Gamma. Right? And we can say that the wavelength of gamma, because they want us to talk about the wavelength, so the wavelength of gamma is smaller than visible light, right? And the reason for that is because, as we said, wavelength increases this way. So since gamma is uh, at the far left, it will have the smallest wavelength, right? Then the next one we can talk about is radio waves. So let's say radio waves, right? And we're going to say that the wavelength is larger than visible light right so we can use our em spectrum here to actually help us to answer this question so this is the visible this is visible light right and anything to the left will have a smaller wavelength than visible light while anything to the right will have a larger wavelength than visible light so since gamma is on the far left it will have the smallest wavelength and therefore smaller than visible light while radio waves is on the far right so it's going to have the largest wavelength and therefore will be larger than visible light so now let's continue so we're given this diagram with uh, some photon of light striking a solar panel while and some of that uh, photons is reflected so here it says now we are to it says electromagnetic waves of one wavelength are absorbed by a solar panel and waves of a longer wavelength are emitted if electromagnetic waves of, a, of wavelength lambda one equal two times ten to the minus seven meters are absorbed by the solar panel as shown in figure three and waves of wavelength lambda equal six point five times ten to the minus five meters are emitted calculate the frequency in each case so we know our general wave equation says that V is equal to F lambda, right? So we're going to be using this expression here to help us to answer these questions. So 
taken wavelength one lambda one right if we transpose this sub this formula here to make the frequency of the subject we're going to get that the frequency f is equal to v over lambda right so taking lambda one so this is for wavelength one we're calculating the frequency of uh, the am wave of wavelength two times 10 to the minus seven meters so what we're going to say then now is f is equal to v over lambda so we're going to get that v since we're dealing with electromagnetic waves we're dealing with electromagnetic waves and we know from before that electromagnetic waves travel at a speed of three times 10 to the eight meters per second right we are going to say that v in this case is three times 10 to the eight meters per second and we're going to be dividing that now by two times 10 to the minus seven meters so when we're calling our calculator for assistance we're going to say three expressed to the eight divided by two expressed to the minus seven and we get that our answer is This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right? So we're gonna get fifteen thousand and this will be terahertz. Right? So we get fifteen thousand terahertz. Alright, so now we can move on to finding the frequency of uh, wavelength 2 or the EM wave with wavelength 2 so again we're going to use our formula that F is equal to V over lambda right and V again is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by the wavelength and wavelength is this 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5 so we get 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5 meters and again we're going to use our calculator so we we'll simply say 3 expressed to the 8 divided by 6.5 expressed to the minus 5 and we get this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're going to get in this case 4.62 terahertz, right, in this case. All right, then now let's see what else they say now. So it says now we are to de determine the decrease in frequency lambda f. So to do that, we can simply say that delta f right, is equal to uh, the initial frequency, which is f1 minus f2. All right, so the frequency of uh, the wavelength for the, for the so the frequency of the EM wave with wavelength F1 minus the frequency of the EM wave with wavelength F2. So, because what we have is we have our light incident in and some is absorbed while some is reflected, right? So to do that, we just simply say, since F1 was 1500 terahertz with a minus 4.62 terahertz, and when we do that, we're going to get, uh, let's just use the calculator for that, 1500 minus 4.62, right? And we're going to get 1495.4 terahertz, right? That would be the decrease in frequency. So now, it says now that we assume that the useful energy transfer to the solar panel is a constant k times the decrease in energy times the decrease in frequency of the EM wave where E is equal to k times delta F. Now it says now state the corresponding energy transferred E1 in terms of k. So basically what I want us to do is to take this equation E equal k delta F right, and transpose it to make k the subject. Right, so we need to make k the subject. So to make k the subject, we can simply divide both sides by delta f. Delta f, and we're going to get that k, right, is equal to e 
divided by delta f. So if we continue, right, it says here that with a change of conditions, the wavelength of the wave now absorbed by the panel increases to 6 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, but the emitted wavelength remains at uh, 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. What fraction of E1, the original energy transferred, is now transferred to the panel? So to do this, we can consider the equation which says that E, which is the energy, is equal to K times the change in frequency, right? Now, in our earlier example, right, we calculated the change in frequency and we got this. Now, for this example now, we have to first determine the frequency of this wavelength. So we're going to say that V is equal to F lambda. And we know that uh, f frequency f is equal to v over lambda, which is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 6.0 times 10 to the minus 7 meters per second. So when we do this, we take our calculator, we can say 3 expressed to the 8 divided by 6 expressed to the minus 7, and we get uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, we get 500 terahertz as our frequency. So now, uh, because it says here that the wavelength, right, remained as 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5 meters, right, we can use the frequency that we obtained in this scenario when the wavelength was 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. So now, we'll now simplify delta F by saying that delta F is equal to this frequency, which is 500 terahertz, minus this frequency, uh, where is it? This frequency, 4.62 terahertz. So we say 4.62 terahertz, terahertz. And when we do that, we get uh, 500 express, uh, 500 minus, minus 462 right we're gonna get 500 minus 4.62 and we get 495.38 Hertz or terahertz so that's our change in frequency now if we consider this equation here where we say that e is equal to k Delta F Right? Since we want to find the ratio of E1, which is the original wavelength, to the wave E1, which is the original energy transferred to the en new energy, we can simply determine this by determining the, the, the fraction of E1 and E2. Right? Now E1 right, would be equal to, so we're going to say this is equal to uh, K delta F, so we're going to have K delta f right 1 over k delta f2 now simply put if we notice k is a constant so we can simply say that these two k's will cancel so the fraction will be determined by the ratio of frequency that we calculated in f1 and this new frequency so therefore, our answer then now would be equal to delta F1 by delta F2, right? Which is simply, this is, this was 1495.4 terahertz. So we're going to say 14, 9, 5, Point four terahertz divided by four point well, four nine five point four terahertz and when we take the quotient of that we take our calculator and we're gonna simply say 
14.95.4 divided by 495.4 right and we're going to get 3 right so therefore what this is saying is that um, in this case we would have absorbed three times the original energy um, in the first scenario right because what we found is that the fraction that we obtain whenever we take the quotient of the initial frequency um, with this new frequency frequency we get three right so therefore the solar panel will absorb three times uh, e one right so this is how we would answer this question so again this is junior roberts with real juniorroberts.com if there was anything in this video that you would like to get further clarification on then post it below in comments and i'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you like this video if it was helpful and click subscribe on the bell notification to get updates whenever i post new videos like this thank you for watching